To convert a slew or a slope generator into an envelope, you need to pass a gate through it. So I'm going to go ahead and reset back to my good starting position here, straight up, exponential in the center, so they're linear, roughly 10 o'clock on these dials. And I'm going to take a copy of the gate from my keyboard. I'm going to plug it into the yellow connector so you can see clearly. Let's go ahead and patch that output. Initially, to the trigger input on one half of our slope generator. And for this exercise, I could be using either half. Then let's take its output, run it into one of the channels on data. Since I'm taking the side with the green LED, I'll plug it into the green trace on data, and then take my patch cable going to my VCF cutoff, and take that as the output. This acts as a mult or a through. So initially when I press the key, you see we're getting a short little burst there. It's just like an attack decay envelope, triggered by the rising edge of my gate. To make it a slow attack, again, rise and fall, act backwards from most envelope generators. So I'll go ahead and go counterclockwise to slow down my rise or attack, and do the same to slow down my release. Maybe speed up my rise a little bit. Now, unlike many envelope generators, this slope generator does not re-trigger. If I send it another gate before it is finished, it's going to ignore it. So if I go several gates quickly here, it's going to ignore them and do one pass until it's finished, and then it'll pick up the next gate I play. So you do need to kind of adjust your playing to the articulation of your envelope. Now, the rise and fall times do indeed have voltage control. I can patch a parameter, such as, say, velocity for my keyboard, into the voltage control to change the envelope time based on my external modulator. Let's go ahead and see which is the velocity on my FH1 over there. Seems to be number three. When I hit it hard, I get a nice red light for a strong voltage. So let's take that velocity, run it over to my voltage control. In this case, I'll do it for both of them. And let's start playing around with how much velocity affects my rise and fall time. The low velocities, maybe I want a slower rise time. Oh, wrong direction, that's speeding it up, so let's go the other way. So it should mean that a high velocity, yep, there it is, is a fast attack. Low velocity, slow attack. Now let's go do the same over on my release, where I want my low velocity be a very slow envelope. I'll speed up its base time a little bit here. And now faster velocity, faster key strikes should speed up those envelope times. Cool. However, that's not the only trick you can do with the voltage controlled inputs on these. When you engage these exponential switches, what they do is create a feedback loop from the output through the voltage control back to the rise and fall times. That's how you change the shape of the envelope. So let's focus on this rise time to begin with. Let's say I want a nice classic logarithmic attack. When this is at 12 o'clock and the exponential switch is in its up position, I should get pretty close to a linear attack again. Slow it down so we can see it more clearly. And as I start bending this off of 12 o'clock, I'll get a different shape. So I go counterclockwise. There we go. Just trying to get my log shape there. Now these are very interactive. As you change the shape, you're going to drastically change your envelope times. So as you change your shape, you will need to readjust your rise and fall times. And keep going. You get a more pronounced shape. And speed it up again. There we go. If I was to go the other direction, I would have an exponential attack, sort of a reverse. Slow it down. So you can see what the opposite looks like. But I want my classic log. A classic logarithmic attack, and for that matter, exponential decay, could take a while to hit its final destination. 
A trick in the original Moog modular synthesizers is they truncated those rises to go into the next stage of the envelope more quickly. And that's what the bottom switch position of exponential does. As I go down to the bottom position, you'll notice that the rise gets cut off and goes into decay much more quickly compared to catching it at a different point in the curve. Even if I slow it down, you see it has not made that gentle attack. It goes into decay or fall much more quickly. So this is classic shape. This is more of a Moog popular envelope type shape. And of course I can do the same thing on the fall side. I'll go to classic shape initially. Start taking this off center to get an exponential release. Let's see what we got here. Again, changing the feedback path through the voltage control changes the time. So let's slow it down. There we go. Again, if I went the other direction, I would get a logarithmic decay. Speed it up here. Quite an unnatural shape, but that could be interesting for other things, which we'll play with here in just a little bit. Let's go back to my nice exponential shape and increase my time. And again, if I was to put this into the down position, I get an alternate shape. You see where it kind of dives into that bottom voltage at a different angle or a different shape. Let's go ahead and tweak the shape here a little bit. Go in the down position. Again, it's interactive with time, but it has a slightly different shape and therefore sound, particularly if I had a low cutoff here. Now that's the trigger in, and I'm just getting an attack decay, and it's ignoring how long I'm holding down a key. If I wanted to pay attention to how long I'm holding down a key, I move this copy of the gate in over to the normal input rather than the trigger input. And now it will act as an attack sustain release generator. Pretty cool, huh? Speed up my attack a little bit here. Maybe a little faster decay too. Now, there's not just one of these sections, there's two of them. And a cool feature of the dual universal slope generator is it does have an end of cycle output. Let's see what that looks like. I'll take a copy of that and temporarily plug it into, uh, let's say, the um, blue channel here, just so we can see what's going on. You notice the blue channel immediately goes high. Whenever these slopes are at zero volts, they've finished their work, the end pulse goes high. But as soon as I play a note, it'll go low. And then you see as soon as I release the note and it finishes its release timing, that blue signal, the end goes back high again. So what can we use that for? Well, we can use it to trigger the other side, can't we? Let's just go to a trigger in for something fast here. Route my end over to trigger in. And now I'm gonna to need to mix together my two halves. Fortunately, I do have a utility mixer in my case. I'm gonna take the cable routed to the VCF cutoff, take to the output of the mixer, Take the output of my left side, the green side, put it to the green input on my mixer, just so you can more easily visualize what's going on here. Let's go ahead and take the output of my red or magenta side to the magenta trace on data. And then take that output, oops, to the magenta input over here. I'm gonna set these both to unity gain to start with. So I'm gonna play a note, and you'll see one trace rise and fall for the first side, and watch the LED, you'll see its status change to follow the voltage. And then when it's done, it's gonna trigger the right side and start a second trace. You see how the two sides are trading off. Now let's say I wanted to create my classic double blip envelope I keep talking about. I need one very fast attack and fall. Going to a second fast attack. Mm -hmm. 
little maybe a little longer release there. Gonna have to watch my articulation. I have to make sure that my fall has finished before I start a new note. Let's go ahead and maybe reduce my fall there. There's that double articulation. Or we can create something more complex where there's much longer rise, fall, rise, fall relationship. And since I have a mixer, I don't have to keep them at equal levels. I can have, say, the first part be at half volume and leave the second half at full volume. Or go the opposite and have a very strong initial spike and then a softer second bump. Kind of a rebound there, or maybe something very gentle. Oh, there's my initial attack and then a swell. Again, I'm using the trigger input. I can switch over to the normal in to sustain notes. I notice when I release this key and this particular fall finishes, it's going to trigger the second envelope. There's that slow second envelope. Go ahead and create more of a pluck sort of sound. Now this lines up one envelope after the other. Of course, I can have them both go at the same time. To do that, I just need to split my trigger to fire them both together. Let's have a little bit of fun here. I'm going to go ahead and take a little hopscotch cable here and get my original copy of my gate from that and have it just trigger a blip. Since I just want a blip, I don't need it to sustain, so I just use the trigger input. Now to copy that over to trigger my second envelope. Now, actually, I'm going to put into in because I do want the second envelope to register my sustain. So I'm going to trigger a blip on the first half and play with sustain a slower envelope on the second half. Maybe a slower attack to get something more dramatic here. There we go. Again, I can lower this level to make it much more gentle. And sustaining, as long as I hold the key down until I release the key, so I'm going to the input, and then we'll follow this fall time. So with a little bit of creative patching, you can create more complex envelopes out of this than typically come with your normal semi-modular or even modular synth. So that's another one of the strengths of the dual universal slope generator.